Okay. Welcome everyone to the Cambridge Ukrainian Studies conversation with uh, Yuri Andrukhovich, Ukraine's leading postmodern prose writer, poet, and uh, essayist. I am Andriy Smitsnyuk, a language teaching officer in Ukrainian uh, here at the University of Cambridge. And each term, uh, Cambridge Ukrainian Studies organizes a series of events that aim at promoting Ukraine and contributing to the study of Ukraine in the United Kingdom and beyond. And today, our guest is Yuri Andruhovich. He is an award-winning author of novels, short stories, poetry collections, and essays that have been translated into numerous languages. He is a public activist who has participated in all key events leading up to and post the 1991 Declaration of Ukraine's Independence. His book of poetry, Sky and Squares, appeared in uh, 1985, and his reputation as a prose writer was established after the publication of his short novels, such as Recreations, The Muscoviad, Perversion, etc. Yuri Andruhovich was also one of the co-founders of the popular literary performance group Buba Bu, that has had a profound and lasting impact on the literally seen in Ukraine. Today's event will take the format of an interview conducted by Dr. Olenka Pevny, who is director of Cambridge Ukrainian Studies. And then the interview will be followed by a Q&A session open to uh, all our viewers. And if you would like to ask, ask a question, then please submit it through Q&A feature on Zoom. I now give the floor to our honored guest, Yuri Andrukhovich and Dr. Olenka Pevny, and I'm sure that uh, all our viewers will join me in welcoming them. Uh, thank you, Andriu. So uh, to all our audience, uh, um, Yuri Andrukhovich and I spoke before the webinar, and we decided that before we begin a conversation and a question and answer period, it would be great to give you a taste, a tantalizing taste of some of the works or examples of the works of uh, Yuri Andrukhovich, so our, our honored guest. So we are going to begin the webinar by uh, a reading. And so uh, Yuri Andrukhovich will read two sections or two passages uh, from the novel Recreazzi or Recreations that was published in 1992. And uh, I will, so he will read one section, I'll translate it or read it in, ink, not translate it, it's been translated, but read it in English. And then he will read another section and I will read the available English translation of this section. And uh, just so you know, the novel is a, a, about a group of self-obsessed writers who are traveling to a festival uh, that's called the Festival of the Resurrecting Spirit. And they're traveling there to read their work and really to just let off some steam. So it is set in the town of Tertupi or Devilsville, and that is somewhere in Western Ukraine. So um, I hope you enjoy these two passages and I give the floor to uh, Yuri Andrukhovich to read the first passage. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello and good evening uh, to everybody who is here. Uh, I'm very glad to start by uh, reading in <clears throat> Ukrainian. And um, I, I just uh, have to say uh, the English translation uh, of this, my very first novel, uh, Recreations, um, has been made by uh, Marco Publishing. Uh, so you can enjoy it uh, listening to uh, reading by uh, Dr. Olen Kapevny. Oh, and um, I start just by small uh, first uh, excerpt. Появляється під кожним містом є ще одне місто. 
зі своїми вулицями і площами, зі своїми звичайними таємницями. Зрештою, я давно здогадувався про це, але не мав нагоди переконатися, що правда, я й не шукав такої нагоди. Бо навіщо переконуватися в тому, в чому ти і так упевнений? Отже, тепер ми йдемо середньовіччям, поверхом нижче до християнських часи. Потім мамонти, потім, здається, мезозой і так далі. Схоження до низу немає кінця, ніби мій роман у віршах. І я заходжу все глибше. Одно тікає. Тож я ніколи не пишу той роман, який позитивний. Головне, що ми на святі. І я скажено радий бачити вас, чудові хлопчиська, мої братове, тебе, Хомський, що вмієш бути поезію навіть злагайна. І тебе, Грицю, народжений у Караганді, що носиш на чолі чорне пасмо волосся, немов вічну жалобу. І бе, Юрку Немирич, що вмираєш по всі день у цьому турнуватому світі, а всі думають, що ти лишень вимахуєшся. Ви славні, великі хлопці. Я віддам усе золото з мене за обідиний рядок будь-кого з вас. За це щастя. Прести з вами майже на острі, крізь вогке середньовіччя, з одної кнайпи до другої, в супроводі цього чемного юнака. Забув, як він називається, але добре вихворій щенюк. Отож, ми йдемо, щоб виринути на світло. Ми йдемо на музику, мов на запах горілки. І добре вип'ємо за те, що є хлопці, і слава вам, що ви є. Пуймо. Хей. Uh, here it goes, uh, the translation by um, Marco Publishing, highly recommended reading. It seems that under each city lies another city with its own streets and squares, its own customs and secrets. I suppose I've always suspected as much, but haven't checked up for myself. I didn't try to check up on what you, uh, you're certain about anyways. So now we're walking through the Middle Ages. A floor below is the pre-Christian era, then the mammoths, then I guess the Mesozoic, and so on. There is no end to this downward progression. It's like my novel in verse. I'm always going deeper, but the bottom is unreachable, so I'll never finish it. But to hell with that. The main thing is that we're here at the festival and I'm ecstatic about seeing you marvelous fellows, my brothers, you Chomsky, who can extract poetry even from shit, and you Hritz, born in Karaganda, forever wearing a bla uh, that black streak of hair across your forehead, like a mark of mourning, and you, Jurko Nemiric, who is dying every day in this insane world uh, while everyone thinks that you're just posturing. You guys are good. You're great. And I'd give up all the gold of this earth for a single line of poetry by any one of you. For the happiness of blundering blindly with you through these dank middle ages from one pub to another in the company of this courteous youth. I've forgotten his name, but what, he's well behaved, the whelp, and thus we move on so we may emerge in light and walk towards the music as though, uh, as though drawn by the scent of vodka, and we'll drink a toast to our existence. Lads, glory be that you exist. Cheers. I hope that was okay. <laughs> yes, it, it, was, it was great. It was just beautiful. Uh, mm, I remember I, as, uh, 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 this book uh, has been published in uh, 1998 and uh, I was first time in Canada uh, 
uh, in according to this uh, publishing. And uh, I was invited to, uh, to some big literary festival in, in Toronto, uh, which is called Harbor Front Readings. And it was my first time I had to read uh, some pages uh, from that novel uh, in English. It was some pre precondition uh, of this festival. The organizers wanted uh, the authors to read always just uh, uh, in English, if even the author comes from uh, from the country uh, where English, not the, the native languages. And uh, so it was uh, my first experience. Uh, exactly this uh, passage, exactly oh. uh, this excerpt. But now I'm going to read a uh, uh, second excerpt, and uh, I, I, I have never read it uh, in English. And, uh, and I have to tell you, it's not it. an easy one to read. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be, of course, it, it could be a catastrophe uh, <laughs> if I dare uh, to read it in English. І тоді, коли на Чортопільській ратуші вибило 12, все почалося. З боку колишньої вулиці Сакрамента сула грандіозна процесія перебирається. Очолена кількома функціонерами з оргкомітетівськими пов'язками і мегафонами в руках. Вийшовши безпосередньо на ринок, процесія розсипалась на кілька потоків. І от уже вони йдуть повз вас, б'ючи в барабани й тулумбаси, сурмлячи в сурми й ріжки, граючи на арфах та гуслах, на струнах та флейтах, на цимбалах дзвінких та цимбалах гучних. Їх ціле море в масках із розмальованими фізіями, їх безліч. То були ангели божі, цигани, маври, козаки, ведмеді, спудеї, чорти, відьми, русалки, пророки, отці Василіани в чорну. Жиди, пігмеї, повії, улани, легіонери, пастушки, яхнята, каліки, божевільні, прокажені, паралітики на роздорожжу, вбивці, розпишаки, турки, індуси, січові стрільці, волоцюги, кобзарі, металісти, самураї, дармограї, сердюки, оліки, мамелюки, янечари, манкурти, ветерани, афганці, багатодітні сім'ї, сарацини, євреї, негри, патриції в тогах, хвоїди, писарі, брехуни з висолопленими язиками, дебіли, козаки-запорожці, піхота, музики, магометани, маланки, маланці, діптянки, блудниці, гуцули, троянці, сармати, етрускі, гіппі, сліпці, трембітарі, фіндюрки, святі з картонними німбами, гетьмани, дженці, танки, ошари, цьохлі, трубадури, різники, юристи, хапуги, Пики, лікарі, ледарі, араби, касапи, ришки, отці домінікани в білому, шльондри, герої, пиворізи, мочеморди, салоїди, голодранці, дуболоми, сажотруси, козолупи, недоріки, менестрелі, проститутки. А всіх інших перелічити просто неможливо. Бо були там ще горили, генерали, гав'яли. Павяни, павликяни, данайці, нанайці, німфи, німфи, асирійці, арнаути, торбоклати, лірники, сильники, шинкарі, македонці, проварі, анахорети, пупорізки, українці, лесбіянки, гноми, мавки, мавпи, лилики, чорні коти, грудні жаби, алхіміки, шохи, профури, татари, бубабісти. Okay. All right, here it goes. Um, and then 
When the Chotopil town hall clock struck 12, it began. From the former street of the Sisters of the Sacrament, there emerged a grand procession of maskers, headed by several functionaries with, uh, with organizing committee armbands and megaphones in their hands. Upon entering Market Square, the procession broke up into a number of streams, and here they are coming past us, beating drums and timpani, blowing trumpets and horns, playing harps and psalteries, string instruments and flutes, cymbals, both sonorous and resonant. There is a whole sea of them in masks and with painted faces. They are innumerable. There were angels of God, gypsies, Moors, Cossacks, bears, studiozzi, devils, witches, naiads, prophets, the Basilican fathers in brown cassocks, Jews, pygmies, ulans, whores, legionnaires, shepherds, lambs, cripples, lunatics, murderers, bandits, Turks, Hindus, Sikh riflemen, vagrants, kobzars, heavy metalists, samurai, idlers, sirduks, oil pressers, mamluks, janissaries, Saracens, Hebrews, Negroes, patricians and togas, sluts, scribes, liars with their tongues hanging out, cretins, Zaporozhian Cossacks, infantrymen, musicians, Mahomedans, Malakans, Mal uh, oh, sorry, Mal Malakas, Malankas, <laughs> no, fallen Malankas, right? Is that why you're yeah, yeah, giggling? Right, right. Malankas. Malankas. Uh, Malansi, moles, fallen women, Hutzels, Trojans, uh, Sarmatians, uh, sorry, hippies, the blind, Trimbita players, harlots, saints with cardboard halos, hetmans, monks, punks, tramps, gossips, troubadours, butchers, jurists, bribe takers, drunkards, physicians, Arabs, brigands, the Dominican fathers in white, strumpets, heroes, beer drinkers, snout dippers, lard eaters, rag ragamuffins, oak breakers, minstrels, prostitute. And it is impossible to enumerate all the others, for there were also generals, gorillas, baboons, Polishians, Danaids, uh, Nane, nymphs, nymph, uh, Assyrians, Albanians, pickpockets, lyre players, innkeepers, Macedonians, brewers, Anchorites, goat skinners, Ukrainians, midwives, gnomes, dryads, bats, black cats, frogs, alchemists, tarts, leopards, tartars, Abyssinians. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was great. With a few mistakes, <laughs> uh, we got through it. it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a hard uh, phonetic task. Oh, yes. And uh, maybe maybe uh, you noted um, it was um, in my in my version um, what I read. Uh, there is the last point uh, of this uh, long 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 list uh, of carnival figures. Uh, the last point is uh, Buba beasts, Buba yes. beast. And um, in the time as uh, Marco Pavlician translated uh, my novel, um, he used uh, a previous version. And it wasn't in, in uh, the Bubavists weren't in, in that version yet, uh, to, to, in, in that time, in the 90s. So I, I read uh, for you. Mm, uh, so a uh, variant which is uh, later. later. And uh, I also noticed that some of the the list was reversed in some places. Do you know some? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. It, it is uh, variable, and uh, sometimes there are mm, new persons, new figures. Uh, which come uh, depending on some uh, new social, political circumstances. And uh, so I, I, I think uh, there are 
um, five or six editions of this novel uh. in originals in Ukrainian. They come, of course, from different times, from different years, and uh, some, some, some uh, people who will compare it uh, in maybe in the future, uh, somebody will compare these uh, changings. Uh, I think it, it could be interesting. It could, I, I could be funny. Too. Could be funny. Yes, yeah. I think it sounds like a PhD topic. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, I would say too small <laughs> and too narrow, uh, but maybe a topic for some student, uh, I don't know, academic uh, work. Uh, we, we call it Kursova uh, Robota, something like this. Like uh, a thesis at the end of uh, a course or something. So yeah, we... maybe maybe an essay mm -hmm. uh, written by uh, by some student in the future. Uh, I am going to do um, something I don't know uh, revolutionary in that I'm going to read another little passage because mm -hmm. originally we agreed that you would read more, and so I really like this next passage. So I'll just read the passage about the flags. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. The din and clamor they created as they bit, kissed, grabbed by the hands, and swept into their stream all who did not object was beyond belief. Over their heads fluttered various absurd flags, green and violet, pink and white striped, black and white checkered, red and blue, and others. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, this last last one, uh, red and blue, red and blue flag. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it was political satire at that time in 1990 because it was then it was the official flag of uh, Ukrainian Soviet Republic, and. Um, I call it a uh, strange or uh, absurdic flag. So it, it was an element of uh, political satire. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so interesting to think about. Um, I think the thesis could be setting all of the different versions in different uh, in the context and thinking about the changed context every time you changed your text. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you have to to um, to ponder context all the time. Mm, if you, uh, if if I have this possibility to prepare some new edition of my mm, elder uh, work, mm, I always use this possibility. Something should be changed. Something should be improved. Uh, something should be more, uh, more topical, mm, and so it is a good uh, example. Uh, exactly this uh, this passage. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions. Is that yes, please? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, as one of Ukraine's uh, key postmodernist authors, I know that. Uh, I, this might not, you might not agree with this, but you have published poetry, novels, and essays. So uh, as Andrea already mentioned, uh, your first book of poems, Skies and Squares, Nebo i Ploshchi, came out in 1985. Uh, you gained eminence when you published Recreazi, um, and now, or recently in 2017, a collection of your essays entitled My Final uh, territory came out in English translation. So I'd like to ask you um, about the beginning of your writing, how you began writing, and um, what prompts you to create in different genres, and whether you have a preferred genre at the moment. Mm. Uh, yes, I started by writing poetry. Uh, which is quite quite usual case, uh, I would say, for uh, 
for many writers, uh, poetry is something which, uh, for me personally, poetry means uh, a very young condition of uh, your um, being, of your soul. And uh, I was quite successful as a poet. Uh, my first uh, publications uh, appeared uh, in early 80s in uh, different uh, Ukrainian uh, periodicals, uh, literary journals, and uh, so forth, uh, so on. Uh, but um, I would say um, I'm not poet anymore, or maybe, maybe I am a poet, but um, I am poet who uh, who has a break, a long break in writing of uh, poems. Um, uh, I should be honest, and I have to say, uh, last time I was writing poems. Uh, was, uh, I think, in, in 2005, so 15 years ago. And um, I don't know if I write poems again or not, uh, but uh, I'm always open to, uh, to the next wave uh, of poems. Uh, I, I hope, I hope, I still uh, am a poet, uh, but I have just to wait and to catch this uh, quite mysterious moment uh, when the poetry uh, comes back. Mm. May of I course, I, I write. I write uh, the essays. I write the essays, but um, it is uh, all, it's always in a way. Um, if I get something like a certain challenge uh, from somebody who uh, formulates for me it as as a question, as a maybe philosophical question, or some. A task uh, for my thinking uh, about my place, uh, where I am, where I live, about the time in which we are, about uh, Central Europe, about uh, Ukrainian cities, uh, Lemberg, uh, Lviv, uh, Leopolis uh, is a very central. Uh, city uh, in in uh, my um, poetics, in my uh, essayistics, and of course uh, I write novels. And uh, if I have to ask uh, your question um, about which uh, genre, which uh, type of writing I would prefer today, um, I, I can say it, it would be a novel, especially because um, I finished uh, the last one, the newest uh, uh, novel uh, has been finished uh, in uh, February this year, and uh, I, I just finished all the preparations to send the book uh, to, to the typography and this novel uh, should appear in the next, in next month, in December. Uh, we know the exact uh, date of uh, this uh, book premiere. It will be on uh, December 13th, oh. and uh, the title of, of this novel is Radio Night, and uh, I'm still in. Uh, I, I 
wait for the book, I expect that this book uh, will be uh, will be quite noticeable and uh, will will be good bread. And uh, I remain for the time being there in, in, in this plot, in this novel. So it is not the thing uh, which I um, have, um, which I have left already. I'm, I'm uh, still living in that novel. So uh, my answer is, uh, I used to be a poet, maybe I, I Export. Uh, I'm an essayist. I, I, I love uh, essayists very much, but uh, it is always something uh, which is an initiative uh, uh, from outside. Uh, let's call it outside. But uh, I think I realize I, I, um, uh, I can. Employ uh, what, I, what I would like to express today uh, in that very time. Uh, so the best for me uh, is a novel. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you a, a question that goes a little bit the other way, sort of um, towards your activism in Ukraine. Um, so I wonder if you can share with us um, on your thoughts on the balance you have sought to achieve uh, between um, sort of pressing social and national issues and the humor of the everyday that uh, is so uh, relevant to all of your texts and between the national and the global in your works. So basically, how do you um, think about uh, this balance of in your writing um, between uh, commitment to social and national uh, actions, and I know that you've been participated, you participated in quite a number of the, um, or in all the events associated with independence and the various revolutions, and yet in your novels you make light of national ideologies and um, of totalitarian ideologies in order to allow for a very light, the lightness of being. So. Um, wondering on how you reach a balance with all of these uh, thoughts and uh, ideas. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for your um, um, high evaluation of uh, what I was doing, and, uh, what I am doing. Um, I'm, I'm not a real uh, activist or uh, pol political activist uh, actually uh, I'm, I'm living all the time I'm living with uh, some uh, in some political environment and uh, in some societies so I cannot be free of uh, of those things uh, which which are uh, altogether uh, Ukrainian contemporary politics. But uh, I would say it is, uh, it is a rather uh, question of aesthetics for me. I mean, my political choice is actually an aesthetical one. Uh, if I don't like uh, what uh, the state how the state power uh, formulates uh, their ideas if I don't like uh, the style uh, of uh, the aesthetic, uh, aesthetical style of uh, the state power, then uh, of course I am against uh, the state power. I will vote against them. I will wish uh, the change of the state power, and this is, of course, a political position. I uh, can't help but uh, just recognize it's, of course, a political position. 
and um, mm, how to find the balance is a very good question. I don't know the answer uh, because uh, I have a lot of uh, mm, pretensions. It's a good word, pretensi. Mm -hmm. Pretensions. Uh, pretensions to uh, to myself, for example. Um, if I read um, something from from my let's say from my uh, political writings, which I have written uh, five or ten years ago, and uh, I'm uh, mostly I'm very disappointed. Uh, mostly I'm very critical to uh, to to the things I formulated. Uh, earlier, uh, and um, uh, I'm not sure I could find this balance uh, in my life. Maybe I'm still looking for it, uh, but actually, uh, I know in a situation, uh, it's a situation which is uh, uh, general for. Um, contemporary Ukraine, where some postulates of uh, my own stylistics, of my own aesthetics, like uh, uh, irony or skepticism, self-irony, humor, uh, what you call lightness, <laughs> uh, they are actually not uh, needed. Mm, we, we have a um, big and uh, crucial, actually, comeback of uh, patriotism uh, in, in poetry, in literature. Of course, we have a very uh, strong uh, war situation in eastern of our country. Uh, we have a big uh, militarization of consciousness uh, in, in that process. And we have a big explosion of seriousness, of chaos. Uh, and it, it is everything is uh, to, to the things. Um, I uh, tried uh s somehow to um uh, to to soften in my time i i tried to um uh, uh, to bring into ukrainian uh more self criticism uh less pathos more irony uh more skepticism and um, it is uh, today. It is not the best time for my ideas. Actually, I feel mal myself being um, out of date. Let's say uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe it 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 will uh, last. It it won't last uh, long years, but. At a time, I, I see something like uh, a big uh, uh, crash of uh, my uh, of, of my own aesthetical uh, principles. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to change direction again. And uh, I'd like to ask you, um, we talked a little bit about this before uh, we began the webinar, but I'd like to ask you about the impact your home as well as your travels have on your writing. So you talked about um, living in ivano frankivsk and how you've grown to love the city. And you've also talked about how much you like to travel. And I'd like to, um, for you to talk about, if possible, how this has influenced your work. Oh um, yes, I uh, I'm still living uh, in in my native city where I was born, which is uh, quite unusual thing for 
contemporary European colleagues. I know a lot, a lot of them, and uh, I, it is it is very very seldom uh, uh, continuous living uh, in the same place where he or she uh, was born. Uh, but uh, I uh, I get some compensation for this uh, being. Uh, always being here, home, uh, by traveling, of course. You, you are right, asking me about, uh, about uh, traveling, uh, because uh, this impact uh, is just, uh, just immense, just immense. I cannot imagine um, myself uh, as a writer, without this possibility to, to change landscapes, to change uh, places, to change uh, contacts, people. And, um, the, best, uh, the best example in, in, uh, in this matter can be my book, which I published in Ukraine in 2011. Which has a title, the title um, "Lexicon of Intimacies." I don't know if you know this uh, book. Uh, it is not a novel. It is a rather a, a quite big collection of uh, small prose, short uh, prose pieces. But the main uh, idea was to collect. Uh, 111 cities of the world, which uh, I have visited, uh, which I can uh, uh, somehow uh, poeticize, somehow uh, which I can uh, describe in a way in, in which just I can describe. And 111 cities uh, uh, follow in a um, alphabetic uh, order in that book. So each uh, letter, each capital letter uh, of uh, our alphabet should be represented uh, by um, sometimes a few cities, sometimes Sometimes they are uh, more than 10. Uh, we have, for example, uh, uh, a letter B, and B uh, is the first letter for many, many, many uh, names of the cities. Uh, B is probably the most popular letter uh, for uh, city names. Uh, but uh, sometimes you have the letters which are not so popular, which are, which are quite problematic, like uh, Y or, uh, or X or Q. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, Latin letters, but in Ukrainian we have, of course, uh, some analogies. We don't have X, we don't have Y, but we have, for example, uh, he, like I, but with uh, with uh, two points uh, on that I. Uh, we we have U, and uh, it is very very difficult uh, to find some city uh, which name uh, is in, uh, with this letter. So may I ask what city yes. you found for Yi and what city you found for U? Just the only, the only one I found for Yi uh, was uh, the Czech city Yihlava. Yihlava. So they write it in original uh, with uh, J-I in the beginning. And in Ukrainian it is uh, written with Yi. And uh, so it was a quite uh, interesting 
theological task uh, to collect uh, 111 cities, but it was also a very interesting uh, uh, experience, uh, some existential experience, let's call it existential experience, uh, to visit all of them. Of course, uh, some of them are the cities uh, which are extremely important uh, for my life, for my uh, personal biography. Uh, like, of course, Kiev, of course, Lviv, uh, like uh, Berlin, like uh, uh, Munich, uh, Warsaw, uh, but some of them are the cities uh, which I have visited just uh, to have the city in my book, just to have the right, uh, my personal uh, allowance, uh, write some sentences, some a few paragraphs about this city. And uh, it was just an example uh, about, about the role of, uh, of traveling in my writer's career. Uh, but uh, actually, I'm very happy to come back uh, from each travel, to come back uh, to ivano Frankivsk, to my native city, uh, because it, it is the best place for me um, just to, to write. Uh, exactly this room, where I am now, <laughs> it's uh, my small space uh, where I can uh, can be totally uh, free and totally uh, mobilized if I need, or maybe totally uh, reflexed. Uh, and uh, so I, I try to unite these things. Uh, being on the road and being whole. Thank you very much. Okay, now I'm gonna ask a very, very heavy question that I know um, you can't really answer, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. <laughs> so uh, how would you characterize the relationship of contemporary Ukrainian literature uh, or literary culture rather to European a literary culture and to U.S. Liter literary culture, and uh, has this relationship somehow changed, regressed, progressed, advanced between the 1980s, 90s, and the present? Oh, it's it's uh, of course a uh, question uh, which uh, demands uh, some longer speech, but. I, I will try to be as brief as I can. Okay. I would I would say the the uh, main precondition, uh, precondition number one, uh, for um, innovativeness in uh, today's uh, has been reached. Uh, in a, in a time uh, where I wrote three creations in 1990, because it was the year uh, when the censorship in Soviet Union has been abolished. And since then, uh, we have actually absolutely new creative situation in Ukraine as a part, former part of former Soviet Union, which uh, of course uh, approaching its uh, 30th anniversary of its independence. So I, I shouldn't uh, appeal, shouldn't address myself to, to the Soviet, reality, but just to mention that uh, 
uh, the censorship in, in Soviet Union has um, some uh, absolutely uh, defined, concrete defined point. It was in 1990. And since then, uh, we have a uh, few new generations in our literature. And um, I would say it is the best uh, situation since ever. Um, I, can, I can say about freedom of speech as the main uh, condition for, uh, for, good, for, uh, for, for good literature, for uh, high quality, high literary quality. In that meaning, uh, Ukrainian writers of um, our time um, don't have some special uh, differences with uh, their Western colleagues. And uh, we are actually involved into um, different um, international literary projects. Uh, we meet with our colleagues uh, in Ukraine and abroad. And uh, we have this possibility to use some, uh, some, some uh, artistic uh, residences, uh, fellowships, uh, some statements. Uh, I personally, I wrote maybe uh, four of uh, of my seven novels. Uh, I wrote uh, being somewhere uh, presidency, uh, having some uh, some good uh, support, and uh, so I would say. Uh, Actually, uh, we had to achieve some higher positions, uh, in, but we, as um, as a literature, as a wholeness of uh, contemporary Ukrainian uh, literature, uh, unfortunately, uh, we are still. Uh, so to say, unreported, unreported. We are uh, not uh, very good now. Uh, there are. I'm two... sorry, um, Mr. Andrukovich, can you lean forward because there's a sta static, a little bit of static, and I'm missing your last words. Is it possible for you when you speak to just lean forward? Yeah. I think that yeah. helps. Yes. Uh, Yes, is it better now? Yes. Is it, is, it's better, okay. Um, yes, uh, we have this um, possibility to, to, to uh, exist uh, to have this exchange, but uh, we still are uh, not so widely and translated uh, in, in other countries. We still have a big, uh, big, big uh, lack uh, of, uh, lack of uh, translators into different languages. There is a big problem to be uh, translated, uh, for example, into uh, French or into Spanish or even into English. Uh, so I, I uh, hope that, that the best times for uh, Ukrainian literature uh, come in, 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 the, in the future. And uh, it depends on uh, how many um, gifted and interested uh, fans uh, we can win in different languages. Our supporters, our 
potential uh, translators. Um, uh, what can I? Uh, yeah, it's probably what I wanted to say here. Of course, there is a, a, a opposite side of this situation. Uh, I mean the practice of uh, literary translations in Ukraine, literary translations from uh, different languages. And uh, there is uh, actually uh, absolutely uh, high, big, great, uh, quantitative jump. Uh, we have a lot of uh, newest books from different countries, F first of all from Western countries, from uh, contemporary literatures uh, of uh, Western world, but also from Africa, uh, also from Asia, so we actually uh, we have a huge number of translations each year. And so I can say my colleagues in Ukraine um, mm, are somehow um, mm, informed. They, they uh, can uh, perceive and can be uh, good orientated in uh, tendencies, in uh, styles, uh, in uh, what are the points, what are the topics, what what, what are the moods in uh, today's uh, literature in, in the world. Uh, I have many, many questions, but I want to give the audience a chance to ask questions. So I'm going to ask you one more question and then I'll yeah. open the floor to questions other uh, questions from others. So I'm wondering when you write, how do you envision your audience? Who do you write for when you write? Um, you know, um, uh, there was a time um, many years ago, um, I knew it better. I knew it better. I mean, my audience. Uh, in 90s and then in the uh, first years of, uh, of this century, um, I was absolutely sure, and I have seen it all the time, uh, my readings, my uh, appearances in audience, uh, absolutely sure that my uh, readers are mostly uh, young people. Uh, they are mostly students and they are the best, the best people. So I perceive them. Uh, they are the best people of this country <laughs> of uh, this time. But uh, I have to, uh, to realize uh, the changing of uh, the times and uh, my readers, my young student readers from 90s uh, should be today, uh, let's, let's say, uh, 40 plus years old. I don't see them anymore. I don't see them uh, at the readings, uh, for example because they live uh, some other lives, uh, some lives that are, that they are very, very busy with uh, uh, everyday life, with troubles. Uh, they, they are a little bit too old uh, or maybe too tired uh, for visiting uh, some literary events. And uh, I cannot much less say about this young uh, audience today. 
I'm not sure they need me. They probably need somebody else, some younger authors. So I, I have to say honest, probably I lost the feeling what my audience today is. How does it look like? I, I'm not sure. Uh, I have something like um, like a general image of uh, my audience. But anyway, I write to uh, some readers who I can imagine, first of all, uh, who love the language uh, in which I write. Uh, my, my favorite reader uh, could be a person with a very, very a delicate, intensive feeling of language and with big love to difficulties of language. Because uh, we have today something like linguistic simplification of everything. It, it is not just uh, in Ukraine in that way. I think all the languages uh, are getting um, uh, reduced, uh, some, some reduction, some reducing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the words uh, become just shorter. Instead of words, uh, uh, we have some uh, just signs, some uh, computer signs like uh, emoji. Uh, we communicate by uh, by symbols. Uh, we, we communicate in social networks by uh, just uh, very very typical uh, names like formulas. So the writer who is uh, all the time looking for. Um, for linguistic complication uh, is, is not very needed today. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that's why I am, a, sometimes I, I have this feeling, actually I'm living in the past. <laughs> uh, I appeal uh, to, to some uh, uh, things which, uh, yes, which are in the past. Thank you very much. I have tons of more questions, as you know, but I really would like to give our audience a chance to ask you some questions. So I'll open the floor to questions. And if we have enough time at the end of the question session, we'll read some of the poems that you picked. Is that OK? Yes, I'm, okay. I'm very supposed to, to read some poems. OK. Excellent. So I will then try to read some of the questions. So the first question comes from uh, Nestor Mendoza, and I apologize in advance if I mispronounce some names. And uh, uh, the question is, uh, I have read Mr. Underhoch's books available in Spanish, and I am fascinated by his work. I would like to ask you, Mr. Underhoch, what do you think is the future of global storytelling in light of the changing language of the internet age? Who are your favorite contemporary writers? Oh, mm. yes, I, I think the storytelling, storytelling is a key word in your question because uh, I, I just learn uh, good storytelling uh, now. I, I, mm, I have to confess Mm, I have uh, this component of prose, uh, the story itself. Uh, I had the longer time um, a little bit neglected. Uh, it was not so important to me um, as uh, um, just uh, intensification of uh, Mm, of the possibilities of language. 
And uh, I think the main, uh, the, or maybe the, one of the most popular tendencies of uh, today's literature is, uh, mm, uh, is a absolutely definitive comeback to the storytelling. Just uh, mm, the art, art of telling, the uh, art of uh, mm, the art of uh, yes of, of storytelling as you said and it is like mm, you know what mm, uh, as I answered the previous mm -hmm. question I, I mentioned this uh, mm, so called simplification uh, I, I call it simplification of, uh, of our language uh, it could be a process which can help in, in, in that case because uh, the many writers uh, come back uh, to some uh, easiest uh, or maybe to some basic, basic uh, structures of telling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it can also mean that uh, uh, that this so-called postmodernism is finally over, is uh, not anymore, uh, a, let's say, main uh, uh, stream of uh, today's writing. Um, I read uh, many authors from uh, Central Eastern Europe. Uh, I uh, I had a big big uh, experience uh, communicating with uh, some of them, with my uh, Polish friends uh, and colleagues, uh, with some Hungarian, uh, some uh, Croatian, some Slovenian authors. And I'm still interested uh, in what they write today. And so one of, of uh, the most important books, uh, which I finally read in the last, uh, last months, uh, was the big novel, uh, Hungarian novel, written by uh, Peter Esterhazy, Harmonia Celeste. I'm sure you know that book. Uh, there is, uh, I think, there is a very good English translation. I hope there is also a Spanish translation. Uh, I'm not sure if Peter Esterhazy was uh, in, an author uh, of the same publishing house in Spain where I am, uh, because you, you probably know my books in Spanish published by Acantilado uh, from Barcelona. And I hope, uh, or I think, that uh, uh, Peter Esterhazy's uh, books uh, were also published there. So I, I'm just uh, astonished and uh, fascinated uh, by, by this big, big work. Okay, uh, great. Then the next two questions will be uh, coming from uh, Asma Okefe. And uh, the first one is uh, maybe to you as uh, first and foremost, Ukrainian writer. What does it mean to be Ukrainian today? And uh, is there, uh, and how would you define a Ukrainian identity? Is there a single one? And the same question from the same and the, from the similar person is: Is there an English translation of uh, a radio night in the pipeline? Oh, the second question is uh, quite easy. <laughs> so I start by the second one. Uh, there is no translation yet. Not yet. Mm, I I just. Uh, sent to some of my uh, friends, translators, uh, a message that um, I have finished it. 
but uh, I didn't show the text uh, by now. And I hope after the book uh, appears in December, uh, I will just send a few copies uh, to, uh, to the translators uh, with, uh, with whom I usually uh, work uh, together on English translations. Um, and the first question, uh, could you could you please uh, remind me? Uh, what does it mean to be Ukrainian today? Yes. And okay, okay. No, there, there is quite uh, um, a straight way to uh, define um, being Ukrainian today means. Uh, Mm, formally, it means just being a citizen of uh, uh, Ukrainian state, but it is, of course, uh, just formally. But, uh, I would say being Ukrainian today means um, being a part of a society which is trying to uh, change uh, some uh, uh, some historical fate and it is very very dynamic uh, society uh, it is uh, very very uh, uh, variable and uh, uh, very difficult in in uh, different uh, in, in in different uh, events, uh, but uh, it is a drama because this change is uh, a really dramatical one. I mean, the change of being a part uh, of Russian world. To being a part of a uh, free Western world, uh, nobody gets it just uh, for free. Uh, it demands on uh, a lot, a lot of uh, work, a lot of uh, efforts, and uh, if you consider. Ukraine today, uh, of course, you can be disappointed by this uh, almost sleeping uh, situation now. Uh, absolute uh, quiet, absolute indifferent, uh, absolute uh, uh, I are indifferent and quiet and sleeping. But uh, I was twice a uh, witness and um, particularly a uh, participant of uh, biggest uh, events in, in newest Ukrainian history. I mean, two revolutions that we had in, in 2004 and uh, the second one, 2013-14. And I'm sure it wasn't all. Mm. Uh, you you uh, cannot uh, be sure uh, how Ukraine can react uh, on some processes in the in the next time. So it's always a kind of uh, mysterious, or maybe uh, let's say let's let's call it a kind of uh, unexpectedness. Uh, it's always surprisingly. Uh, I'm 60 years old. I, I live in Ukraine all my life. I'm Ukrainian. 
and uh, I'm still asking, uh, I, I'm still surprised by Ukraine and Ukrainians. I'm asking what can they do next? Uh, I, I cannot say, I, I cannot be a, a prophet or something because it, it is a kind of uh, substance uh, which is absolutely unpredictable. Okay, I personally uh, watched an interview with you, of you with Yanina Sokolova recently. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you were telling her basically what you think about the current state of Ukraine and what is happening. So I wanted to ask you if you're positively surprised with Ukrainians or negatively surprised with Ukrainians. Both. Uh, at the moment. Both. 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 Uh, at this moment, of course, uh, there is more, uh, more um, a critical, uh, critical mood, uh, critical uh, vision of Ukraine and Ukrainian society. Uh, but it is nowadays much better than last year. <laughs> if we speak in uh, in uh, strict political terms. Uh, 2019 was an uh, absolutely bad year uh, personally for me because I, I was deeply, deeply disappointed. and I, I was almost destroyed uh, by political choice of Ukrainians uh, last mm. year. But now I see uh, the situation gets uh, better, it is going to be uh, mm, uh, some, uh, some kind of uh, concurrence in political life again. We are back to normal political life. I mean, different uh, uh, political environments and concurrency and uh, I hope uh, that uh, in in uh, two or three years uh, we or maybe maybe earlier uh, we can experience a new powerful and interesting uh, big social political uh, civic movement in, in Ukraine. Okay. Okay, and we have one more question that I think also fits in the your opinion about Ukraine category from Alice uh, Kupeyev. And uh, it is, uh, 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 you mentioned the list of uh, very many uh, personalities from uh, Rekreati. And if hypothetically you had to rewrite a similar list that reflects on the contemporary period, yeah, 2000, 2000. 20, which personalities would you add? Or what types of people maybe would you add? <laughs> uh, yes, in, in that, um, let's call it procession, uh, where the, the carnival figures uh, are going, um, I, would add, I would add there, uh, absolutely, definitively, uh let's call it uh, corruptioners uh maybe uh, some uh, uh transgender persons uh feminists and anti-feminists uh so actually uh oh uh absolutely uh sure that, 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 that there could be somebody uh, somehow connected to to our uh covid situation so maybe uh, they, uh some covid viruses or coronaviruses or something like this uh yes Okay, 
Okay, that's uh, an interesting answer. And uh, the last question from our audience is, in your opinion, how the problem of the absence of the translators can be solved? And how to define who is capable of delivering high quality translation of literature and who is not? I think uh, we, we have um, quite uh, uh, quite good uh, teachers and professor of, of Ukrainian in uh, um, different Western countries, but we don't have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, cathedr, tak? cathedras. Uh, departments, faculties, departments, faculties, faculties, at the universities, and if we do, if if there are some, uh, then uh, mm, there will be a very good idea to have mm, to have mm, the possibility to communicate with uh, today's Ukrainian language. Uh, within Ukraine, uh, being in Ukraine, so to to have a lot of uh, programs uh, for foreigners who uh, are interested in Ukrainian literature, Ukrainian language in Ukraine as such, and who are ready um, to uh, visit Ukraine and uh, to live some, to spend some time there. Uh, so I, I think this is the task for uh, Ukraine itself, actually, for Ukrainian government, for Ukrainian non-governmental organizations, uh, for Ukrainian activists, for Ukrainian uh, sponsors, uh, mecenats, uh, to create uh, some big network in Ukraine, uh, inviting uh, inviting the people, the, especially the young people, um, to live in Ukraine, to spend to, to, to spend some time, some money to travel, uh, to compare uh, Kharkiv with uh, Lviv or. Uh, Odessa with Kiev uh, to uh, meet uh, some immediate contacts, uh, some direct uh, persons, direct friends, to, to find the friends in Ukraine and to fall in love with this country. And uh, then maybe with the time, it brings uh, beautiful fruits. Uh, the people come back to their countries and they have some nostalgia for Ukraine. They have some, uh, some uh, uh, memories. They have some emotions connecting them to this country, to this language, to this literature, and then they start translating. They, they work. They uh, realize their, their uh, fascination and their love. Okay, good. We are running out of time, but I would like to ask to read maybe one last question before uh, wrapping it up. May I just jump, jump in because I've been dying to ask you this question about translation. You translate from various languages into Ukrainian, yes. including from Russian into Ukrainian. Why do you feel the need to translate from Russian into Ukrainian? Oh, uh, because it is a good, uh, good for Ukrainian language. Uh, each translation is uh, more important for the language into which uh, we translate, because it, it is enrichment. Uh, of course, original texts are very important, but if the language is able for translations for different other languages, this language 
is somehow uh, just will be stronger, will be richer, and and uh, is um, let's call it sustainable. And uh, of course, there is always a question: Why do you translate? from Russian, everyone in Ukraine can read it in Russian in original. But um, I remember the case of um, Ukrainian classical poet Ivan Franko, um, who translated uh, the Polish poetry at the end of 19th century. And uh, he has been asked the same thing. Everyone in Lviv uh, reads and understands and speaks Polish. Why do you translate Adam Mickiewicz from Polish into Ukrainian? And Ivan Franko had an answer in the, in, in the meaning. Uh, okay, but maybe, maybe uh, somewhere there are the times, the times come when Ukrainians uh, won't be able to read directly Polish original. So I also have this reason. But first of all, I think there is a big, uh, a big challenge to translate from Russian for Ukrainian poets. If I translate, for example, Boris Pasternak or uh, Osip Mandelstam, both of them, they, they are just genius. They are uh, the biggest poets of, of the world. Mm, I mean, of course, previous century, but still. Uh, it is a very high challenge for, for Ukrainian translator. And uh, if he or she can succeed, uh, it is a big victory of uh, of Ukrainian language as such. Okay. Andrew, I, I apologize. But for but that. I have just to yeah. add. Maybe it will be interesting. Uh, nowadays, I am translating uh, Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, I have to I have to do King Lear uh, till uh, the end of January uh, because my publisher who published. Uh, Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet in, in my translations. He published them then before uh, a few years ago. He insisted me to translate King Lear, which I don't like too much. But now I, I discover for me this uh, deepness of, of, uh, of King Lear. Thank you. Okay, and uh, maybe one last question before we're finishing is uh, from, uh, the, by the way, the question about translation was brought by uh, Oleksandr Tomaschuk, and then the next question is by uh, Rory Finnan, uh, which is uh, uh, about also the passage from Rekreati that feels like homage to the work of Ivan Kotlarevsky, particularly in Aida and the scenes in hell. And uh, uh, Rory Finn is writing, I recall that fairly recently you performed excerpts from an Aida before live audience. Could you please speak about this experience of bringing Kotlarevsky alive today, alive today uh, roughly two centuries later? How would you describe his legacy for Ukrainian literature as well as his influence on your poetry and prose? Um, yes, Kotlarevsky is, of course, is a founder of uh, modern Ukrainian literature. Mm, the author of the uh, first uh, book published uh, in Ukrainian. But uh, all of us, we know it. But I think he is still under-evaluated. Uh, and uh, his perception in Ukraine is somehow restricted uh, to some uh, just comical, uh, parodistical points. And uh, I think it is uh, 
really misunderstanding that we don't see some uh, dramatical and universal plots in uh, Kotlarevsky's legacy. Uh, of course, his uh, long poem, Eneida, first of all, because uh, his plays uh, are not so important. But uh, Neida is a completely new discourse uh, in then Ukrainian literature. And it was the beginning of everything. And uh, uh, a few years ago, um, the friends of mine, uh, uh, be they they are from different uh, from different uh, arts. Let's say some of them are the people from theater. Some of them are musicians, and me. Uh, and uh, so we created uh, some uh, performance. Uh, we call it multimedia uh, vestava, mm -hmm. multi uh, medium. Multimedia, multimedia, multimedia performance uh, under the title "Beskinechna uh, Podorosh Abo Eneida," endless journey. Uh, journey. Yes, right. Endless journey or Eneida, and we tried to uh, uh, to include. Uh, in, in that performance, uh, the newest uh, technological possibilities like uh, video art, uh, electronic, uh, electronics, uh, uh, new, new music. Uh, it is a mix of uh, newest avant-garde music, electronic music and uh, classical guitar. Uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, his um, compositions for uh, string instrument. And then uh, we combined uh, my own uh, yeah. poetical text and uh, my essays with original uh, fragments, original quotations, sometimes longer uh, passages of uh, Kotlarevsky's Eneida. And it was quite, quite new and quite successful. Uh, we had some uh, longer tours uh, in Ukraine with this performance uh, in in the winter 2018, for example. We uh, toured in uh, Ukrainian East. Uh, we we made these performances in uh, uh, the eastern parts of Ukraine uh, on, on uh, quite close to to the line of linea uh, rozmezhuvania front line of today and uh, it was always uh, very good uh, perceived I I think. Um, we will continue uh, such kind of experiments. So I, I always say okay. we, because I'm just an element, I'm just one of performance in that project. Uh, there is a, a director of everything, uh, Olya Mikhailuk, who uh, has this vision of uh, whole thing, but each of us, uh, makes uh, his or her part in, in that performance. And my part is probably one of the most intensive because uh, uh, it is uh, the text, uh, uh, different texts. They are very different in the style, in mood, in the tonality. And uh, I, I have to be a little bit uh, an actor a little bit a uh, narrator, a little bit just an author who uh, reads his own text. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, I would 
like to thank you, uh, Pan Andruhovich, for this excellent evening and for reading your prose. And uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Lanka Pavne for uh, great questions and for reading uh, excellent <laughs> English translations. And uh, of course, I would like to thank our audience uh, for uh, watching this event. Uh, and uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I would like to, um, I know that many people have to leave and it's been an hour, over an hour and a half, but I'd like to end by uh, reading some of the poems that you picked, Mr. Andruhovich. So uh, if you don't <laughs> mind uh, reading your Kozak uh, Yamaika or uh, Jamaica, Jamaica the Kozak, and uh, maybe we'll end on that note. Yes, this one, this one. Okay, because, uh, you know, I, I have chosen uh, this poem uh, because it used to be a kind of, uh, of my visiting card. Uh, it is quite old. I wrote it in, uh, I think it was 87. But then it, um, it, it was very popular in 90s. And uh, many, many readers in Ukraine uh, have recognized me uh, as an author of uh, exactly of, of this very poem of uh, Kozak Yamaika. Okay. So I, I also have some musical versions of uh, yeah. the same text uh, together with the Polish band uh, Carbido. Uh, we recorded uh, our first CD in 2006 and uh, Kozak Yamaika is, is there on, on that CD too. Oh, wait, 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 before you begin, I'm just going to warn people that there might be some lewd uh, and offensive language, uh, just because we're required to do this. So now go ahead. O, skilki koneku brateku krutik chudasi na svidi. Delivse, dopoke kruke ochei ne vipyuti, a malo. Po sebik pahama mama, po toibik palme haiti. I veži fritao na baču, jak vidu v noči iz bungalo. I tak meni z toho hrisko, što vyblakli vsi šarovare, jakoho lisoho čorta, z jakih po pitzemnih faun, ta izradili nas pekelni morski kosari korsare. A baćko, Хотіли взяти о той блаженний фрітал. А там тринадцять костьолів і вічна війна з Амуром, а ще тринадцять безодень, де срібло злото коморне. Дівчата, немовляни, нечутно ростуть за муром, і хочеться їм любови, а їх зодягли у чорне, кружаю тепер свуху. На двоє з піратом діком. Кажу йому, схаменися, покайся, кажу, паскудо. Невже коли ти Європа, то вже не єси чоловік, якого хріна продався за тридцять гнилих ескудо. А тік, то химерна штучка, кликає папугу, пугу, плеще мене позаплічно, заламує ліктів горі. Оце тобі лица розлугу, усьо тобі зелепугу. To be or not to be, каже, і булькає. I'm sorry. Не вільницю, каже, маю, зі шкірою, мов какао. Купи, сизокрилий орле, маркотно ж, без господині. Город засівати не конче, предсмокує так лукаво. Город на ній проростає, чучун, ананаси, дві дині. На плодиш, каже козацтва, припнеш усіх до коша. Тільки ярму не дається, шия моя душа. Та вже його і не чую, плюю на плюгаву супліку. Конику мій, невірнику мій, апостоли мій хома, Піду на зорю вечірню, зріжу цукрову сопілку, сяду над океаном.
tam žene ne. I nema. Thank you very much. Duže djakuju. Thank you. I'm going to read the translation. Yes, of course. Of yeah. And it is, I don't know if it's prepared by Vitali Chernetsky. Vitali Chernetsky, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jamaica the Kozak. Oh, how many tough miracles are out there, my stallion, my brother. I'd gaze at them until ravens drink up my eyes, but still would want more. On this side is Bahama Mama, on the other the palms of Haiti. At night, stepping out of the bungalow, I see the towers of Freetown. And it makes me feel so frustrated that our Sunday best have faded. What the hell for? Out of which underground fa faunas? The sea mowers' corseries betrayed us in the battle when the father wanted to take the blessed place, Freetown. There they have 13 churches and an eternal war with Cupid and also 13 abysses where silver and gold are hidden. Young girls, there are like vines growing quietly behind the walls. They're dying to make love, but they have been dressed in black. And now I drink moonshine together with Dick the pirate. I tell him, come to your senses, repent. I tell him, you bastard. Is it really that if you're European, you don't have to be a man? Why the fuck have you sold yourself for 30 rotten escudos? And Dick, he's a weird one. He strokes the piebald parrot, pats me on the shoulder, rings hands up high. He's a knight errant. For you, here's all that green stuff. To be or not to be, he says, and burps. I am sorry. He says, I have a slave girl with skin the color of cocoa. Buy her, oh my gray eagle. It's tough without a woman. No need to plant a garden, he adds, chuckling slyly. A garden grows out of her body with tobacco, pineapples, melons. You'll make a lot of little Kozaks. Take all of them into your host. However, my neck, my soul, does not yield to a yoke. But I do not even hear him. I spit on his miserable ent entreating. My stallion, my, my unfaithful one, my Thomas the Apostle. I will go out at sunset, make a flute out of sugar cane, sit down by the ocean, and now I am no more. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Thank you very much. For I, I think uh, this is a beautiful translation. I, uh, I followed. Uh, you're reading now, and so I, I just, I, I'm just uh, fascinated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for your time and for agreeing to speak with us. And um, I hope that my, there, we have students here, Andrea and I are teaching the introduction to Ukrainian language and uh, culture and literature. I wish, I wish all of them. Uh, a highest success in uh, uh, the Ukrainian studies as they can just uh, wish for themselves. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, and we wish. Go ahead. No, and we wish you, uh, Pan Yuri, uh, the greatest success with your uh, future book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, our audience, for watching.